We're set. So welcome everyone. Welcome on Sunday morning. Well, for me, it's Sunday morning to this iPad intermediate class. We may or may not get to all of these topics today. Um, sometimes we just get into great discussions with lots of good questions and we just don't get to everything. But uh, I want to show you how you can open up Siri, how you can open your apps just by using Siri. We're going to talk about you know, copying and pasting text on your iPad. How do you take a screenshot? Uh, if we get to it, we'll talk about using the Files app. I also want to talk to you about how you can switch between your open apps so that you can close them if they're running in the background uh, using the search menu and using, uh, we may even get to uh, the control center. Again, we'll see, but I also want to talk about how you can bookmark websites in your Safari browser, because I get that question a lot. So um, some of you, you know, this is old hat and for others, like I've, I've never really been able to do that comfortably. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to start with something that I think will make make your using your iPad a lot easier, the use of your iPad a lot easier. So I'm going to resize my screen here. Let's just close this down. And if you'll give me a second, I'm going to magic. I'm just lying in my, <laughs> my iPad. There we go. I try to make it as large as I can. And I like to hold my iPad on the side. It's just how I prefer to use it. Also, with my model, I have a home button. So I'm working off of an iPad mini. Mine is a fifth generation. So um, just so that you, you know what my model is, I have a home button. So the way that we're going to first set this up, because what will happen is if you have a home button, you're going to press and hold the home button and you'll say, and you, you'll just say open and then the name of the app. But to do this, we need to go through a setup. And I have this over here. I've told you, whoops, I put it down. You need to go into your settings app. Then we're going to go into accessibility. We'll select the home button. And then we'll press, we'll select the press and hold to speak. So let me hop back over. I'm on my iPad. I'm going to tap on my settings app. And then on the left over here, I'm going to scroll down until I get to my accessibility menu right here where my purple pointer is. I'm gonna tap on accessibility. And then if I scroll down on the right-hand side, you'll see this is where my home button setting lives, right over here. My purple pointer is right there. I'm going to tap on home button. And down in this area where it says press and hold to speak, by default, this will say off. And all I do is I just tap on Siri. And then you're set. You've now set this up so that you can press and hold on your home button. So I'm just going to click on my home button to close the settings. And then let me show you how you'll use this. So um, again, I'm working off of something that has a home button. Um, uh, I, you can set this up to use the Hey Siri. Um, I think if you click and hold your one of your volume buttons, and I'll 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 find that and I'll add it to the after class notes. But look what happens. So I'm going to press and hold my home button and say open notes. And then I'm going to release my home button. And what we'll do, there it is. This is I use a notes feature. Uh, it's an app, and then I'm going to close this. Let me do something else. Let's do Safari. Open Safari, and then I release my home button, and I'm just pressing and closing on my home button. Let's see if it'll do it. It should open up. Let's try this again. Open Safari. There we go. 
And so I just press the home button, open the name of the app, and then release my home button. So I think this is a lot easier than scrolling through, trying to find the app that you're looking for. For me, because I have a home button, I just press and hold it, open the name of the app, and then it'll just pop open for me. And then when you're getting ready to close the app, you can either press on your home button. Let me see if it'll, I wanna to get to my annotate. Hang on for one second. You can either press and close, um, you know, just give it a click on your home button, or you can swipe up from the bottom of your screen to close the app as well. And so let me know if anyone has a question about this. I think it's really useful and it's one of the features where you can really make your iPad work for you. And so this is, again, I just go, I went into my settings. I went into accessibility. I scroll down towards the, the middle of the accessibility. And then this is where you'll find those settings in the home button. So feel free to give this a try. And um, because I have a home button, I'm going to include, I just made a note with the after class notes, for those of you who don't have a home button on your model, uh, how you would set that up. Um, again, I have a home button, so sorry. <laughs> I can, uh, and the funny thing is I have my iPhone right next to me and I've set it up on my iPhone. So when I'm doing this on my iPad, the same thing happens on my iPhone. The same app opens up. So it's, <laughs> it works both ways. All right. Anna, did you have a question? Oh, uh, feel free to unmute yourself, Ann. Whoops, you're muted. Uh, you're still muted, Anne. Trying to do it with my finger, it doesn't work. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. I got the home um, accessibilities. I got the yeah. home button, right? The next one's home button. Right. Okay. And then it, then what do I do? Uh, do you see where it says, if you'll scroll down a little bit, we're looking for the press and hold to speak. Do you have that? It says Surrey will will respond. I got Surrey as yes. Okay, you have that as yes. So do you know what type of a model you have? Do you have a, like an iPad Air maybe or iPad Pro? And which is fine. It because says iPad um, part two. Okay. That's all I know. So I'm going to just- Mini two. Let me show you. Mini two. I'm sorry, a mini two. Mini, um, mini two. It's an so, old one. Oh, okay. Um, so this is where you have press and hold to speak. You have that one turned on. Yes, I do. And it says Surrey and then it has off. And I have okay. Surrey as yes. All right. So, and does it work for you when you click on? Yes, um, it does. All when right. I do well, Surrey, it works. Then we're fine there. Okay. Let's just. That's yeah, it. That's exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So don't worry about the other one. You're welcome. Awesome. Yay. We have a win. <laughs> All right. So that's one thing that you can do. I think that makes using your iPad so much easier. Um, I do this all the time. I'm so lazy. Pat, did you have a question? Yes. How, how do you know what type iPad you have. Mine has a home button. Sure. Great question, Pat. So I'm going to, if you tap on your settings app, what you can do is once you're in your settings, I'm just scrolling down on my left side of my settings and I'm going into, I'm tapping on general right here. If I tap on my general menu, on the right-hand side, you'll see that there is uh, something called about. 
there's an about menu. So if you tap on about, and this is really useful, this is where your model is. I'm, I'm a messy drawer, sorry. Okay, I remembered the about, but I didn't know where to find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. And so I went I to one an place and it didn't tell me that. Okay. So you you're good. You found your your version, your model. Yes, number. thank Sorry. you. Okay. You're so you're welcome. I'm sixth I'm generation. <laughs> you're sixth generation. Okay. You're right ahead of me. And did you have a question? Oh, sorry, you're you're muted again, and oh, she's like, ah. <laughs> While we're on that screen, the one below where it says software version, mm -hmm. and yesterday or the whenever I did the basics, it said to use the app for the library. You needed a fifteen point zero, and yes. when I look at mine, it says twelve point five. Like I say, it's old. How do I update that to a fifteen, All or right. do I have to buy something? No. You don't have to buy anything. I'm going to tap on that general link that I, I just circled and I'm going just back one where it says software update. So I'm in my general menu and right underneath about their software update. If I tap on software update, now I have my software update automatic set to on. Let me just, uh, you may not, you, yours is I don't going see to a probably, software update. Oh, you don't. Is under it under general? general? Is it, it under general? It should be. Yes, it should be. I have general control. Oh, there I see it. It's over on the other okay. side. Okay. Sorry. Gotcha. On the right-hand side, software update. Okay. Now you'll see it says um, automatic updates. It'll probably say off and that's fine. No, it says it, on. Okay, so it does say on. I'm going to put mine on. Um, does it say install? What does it say for download? Okay, I, I hit it. It says um, automatically install software updates overnight after they have mm -hmm. been downloaded. You will need to okay. receive a notification before updates are installed. No, not you will. You will receive them. Yeah. Okay, your so iPad your must I... be charging and connected to, to do the update. Okay. So mine so... is plugged in all. It's all plugged in all the time. Okay, let me just see. Um, and it hasn't been updating at all? And is um, that what you're saying? I guess not. I it's haven't around, really, well, I mean, it works, so I don't pay attention to it. Yeah, um, so you're on, oh, you should be receiving updates. Um, and you're on a, what's your, I'm sorry, what's your uh, iPad version again? It says iPad. iPad mini two. Okay. iPad mini two. You have to plug it in overnight. Oh, I do. Yeah, you do. And yeah. half the day um, because the battery and, is and so. You've had it. Yeah. You've had it for a while. You said. Long time. Yeah. Um, in this case. It may be that um, because it's an older model, it may only be able to support up to a certain um, iOS version. And I'll be happy to, to check on that for you and see if I find anything and add it to the after class notes. Well, it does everything that I okay. used it for, okay. except when I was really interested when you mentioned the app library. Yeah. And, but. Uh, I'm going to okay. show you another way to, to gain access to those apps also. So I'm just going to click on. I'm sorry, I didn't home. mean to interrupt. No, no, that's okay. The more the merrier. I love it. All right. What else do we, oh, switching between apps. So the question was, how do I find, uh, how do I see where um, I have all of my apps open on one screen? So remember, as you are opening apps on your iPad, even if you, you know, for example, you're clicking on the home button to, to close the app, um, they're still running in the background. So if you truly wanted to close an app, let me show you how 
you're going to bring up a screen that shows all of the open apps and how you can close them because eventually they will drain your battery if you have lots of open apps. So to do this, one of the easiest ways that I found to define this um, with your finger. So I'm going to start at the bottom of my iPad screen. I'm going to do an upward swiping motion. And I tend to just hesitate for a second once I've swiped up. So let me show you what this looks like. I'm starting at the bottom. I'm swiping up from my finger and then I release. Now, the other way to do this is you can double tap, double click. Whoops, sorry about that. Go away, go away. You can double click on your home button and it will do the same thing. And so again, I just started at the very bottom of my iPad screen and with my finger, I did a swipe up, probably just like to the middle of your screen. I hold it there for a second and then I release and it will show you all of the apps that you have open. So I'm taking my finger and I'm swiping left. And these are all the apps that I currently have open. Now, if I wanted to start closing an app, and by the way, you can tap on any app from the screen to open it. That's an, another way of getting to, to apps. You can just open up the apps that you know that you've had open in the past and then scroll through if you have, if you're like me and you have a number of them, scroll through, find the one that you want and tap on it. But if we wanted to close an app from this screen, what you can do is with your finger, just press on that app and swipe up. You're just gonna do this hold and swipe. So let me show you, I'll do this with the, the app that I, it's my, my nail. I'm going to just swipe up just like that. I'll do one more, I'll do the LinkedIn swipe up. And what I've now done is I've truly closed the app. So it's not running in the background. And I wanted people to know about this. First of all, you know, you can always access apps. This is yet another way of accessing apps that you've opened. Uh, we know that we always have the doc here. But if you're finding that, you know, you, I said, wow, I have lots of apps from time to time. I will come here, open up my open app screen, and I will close a number of apps that I know I haven't. It's like, gosh, I haven't been running that in a while. So I'll just, with my finger, touch it and swipe up. And now I've closed the app. Let me know if anybody has any questions about this. It's, I find it to be um, useful, especially if you're finding that maybe your iPad's been slowing down a little bit. Take a look at what apps you have running in the background. If there are a lot, uh, you probably want to close. You can close some of them. You can close all of them. Your choice. And so once you have this screen open, to close it, if you have a, a home button, you can always just click on the home button once. Or your other option is to just, again, swipe up from the bottom of your screen and that always closes whatever app you have open. So again, let me know if you have any questions. I thought this is really useful. Not everybody knows about this. So that's the open app. Next up, heard the open app screen. Next up, uh, let's talk about how we copy and paste text when you're in your iPad. Because I, I get this question a lot. So what I'm going to do is going to open up my Safari browser. You could literally open up any app. I just am going to open up my Safari browser and I want to show you, I'm just going to open up a random article. I'm going to copy text and then I'm going to, to paste it. And I just pick you know, an app. Uh, it doesn't matter what app you're working with. So 
here is my, let me go back to my little drawing tool. I'm just going to tap on my Safari browser window. Just decided to, to go with that one, no particular reason. And um, I already have, I just opened up cute puppies, why not? I literally just at random picked a particular article just so that I could get some text onto the screen. So you can do this when you have any app open. You can copy and paste text from any app to any other app. So once you have your text open, with your article, whatever you have open, how do you start copying text? So I'm taking my finger and um, let's just say I'm going to copy this paragraph. And I just, again, I'm taking my finger and right before that S in the word still, I'm just tapping on it. I'm just sort of doing a press and hold. And you'll see when I do the little press and hold right on that word still, when I, when I release my finger, there are these two in this, what well, looks blue and for me, but I've highlighted some text and now I have these two little blue circles. What you can do with your finger, if you're using your finger, is press and hold one of the blue circles and you can literally drag it down and across. Let me show you how this is going to work. I'm going to take the bottom blue circle. I'm going to press on it. And do you see, I'm dragging my finger across. I'm dragging my finger down through the text. You can, you know, you just have to get used to it. I'm just going to do a little bit right here. I'll just do that. And you can see how I'm dragging my finger. I'm just press and hold on the blue and I drag my finger. And you know, you just need to get used to this. When I release my finger, when I'm done dragging across, dragging down, there is this menu. Let me clear off. There's this menu that shows up. And the menu is going to be different depending upon the app that you're working in. But you'll always have this copy. So again, I drag one of the circles. You can drag it across. You can drag it down. You can drag it up. And when I release my finger, when I'm done highlighting the text that I wish to copy, in this menu that shows up, and again, menus will change depending upon the app you're working in. If I tap on copy and I've circled copy from the menu, just simply tap on it. The menu goes away. So what I've just done is I've copied this text that I've highlighted in blue. I've copied it to something called the clipboard. Now the clipboard is this area, this temporary storage space in your device's memory. And the only way that you access information from the clipboard is by using a paste function. So now that we've copied this highlighted text to our clipboard, how do you paste it? Well, what I'm going to do is close this app. I'm just going to click on my, my um, home button. And I'm just going to bring up another app. It, you could be sending this in an email. You could be texting this. You could be bringing up a, you know, I have a Google Docs here. Just any app. I I work with this app called Notes. It's an only, it comes with my iPad. It's like a note taker. I'm just going to tap on Notes. And then um, I'm also, uh, let me see, I want to create a new note. So let me just do quick notes. Um, I'm just doing a whole bunch of fancy stuff. I just, I created a new note just so that I could have some blank space to show you. And I'm also going to turn off, just disappear my keyboard. So I am in this app, I'm in a blank area. And again, you could open any app on your iPad that allows you to, you know, edit. 
And uh, with my finger, I'm just going to press and hold right there. And when I press and hold, you'll notice why isn't this doing this? I hate when press and hold, come on because of the notes of the way that I opened it. Let's do this again. Let's try this one more time. I don't want to be in quick notes. Let me just go to notes. Let me open a new note. Try this again. Okay, there I go. I press and hold. And I think the difference is I need to have my keyboard on my iPad displayed. It doesn't like it when I, I close it. So again, I took my finger, any blank area, whatever app you have open, you're taking your finger, you're gonna press and hold. And when you release, there'll be a menu displayed. And again, the menu is going to differ depending upon the app you're in. There is my paste app, my, my paste selection in the menu. When I tap on paste, you can see I've now pasted that paragraph that I copied from my Safari browser. And again, I'm going to do this one more time. I'm just going to hit my return key a few times. I'm taking how do you my get finger. to the new notes, Vicki? Uh, how do you get to the notes? The new yeah, notes? No, no, the new notes. New notes. Oh, that's something a little bit different, Nancy. I'll be happy to, if you want to hang out for a couple minutes towards the end of class, I'll be happy to show you that. So one of the things I, I just want to show you one more time how you paste. Again, you're taking your finger, you're going to press and hold in the area that you wish to, to paste. And then you're simply going to find the paste option in your menu that displays, you'll just tap on paste. And I've copied the same paragraph twice because I, I wanted to, I pasted it twice because I just wanted to show you what it looks like. And so let me know if anyone is having any questions about that. Um, really useful, you can copy text from anywhere and paste it into just about any app um, that allows you to have like this edit function. So let me know if you have any questions about copying and pasting. And again, when you're copying something, and so just so I can show you, let's copy this. I'm going to press and hold right next to that word still, and you'll see it highlights the word, but then I can take my finger and I can literally grab one of those circles that's colored in and I can just drag it to the right. I can drag it down, up, to the left. This is where you'll just need to practice with your finger, just dragging it around. And then as soon as you release your finger, that's where you'll find the copy option. You'll tap on it. And then it saves whatever you've highlighted here into the clipboard. And then you can move to any other app and paste this copy text into your app. And it will copy pictures as well. So again, let me know if you have any questions about that. Just going to tap on notes. And Nancy, let me just answer your, your question really quickly. When I tap on notes, if I tap on this little symbol in the upper left-hand corner of notes, this is where Quick Notes is. That's one of the ways of getting to it. And so I actually talk about Quick Notes in my advanced iPad class. All right, so that's copying and pasting for those of you who are still like, I never really knew you could do that. Taking a screenshot, I go over this because I get this question a lot. How do you take a screenshot on your iPad? I wanna make this a little bit larger. I'm gonna show you on my iPad in a moment. Um, this is going to depend on the, uh, the type of iPad that you have. So if you have a home button, like I do, the way that you take a screenshot of whatever is 
is currently on your iPad. You're going to simultaneously press your home button with your on off button. You'll do it at the same time. You'll just press them at the same time. If you don't have a home button, if you're working off of a model that doesn't have a home button, what you'll do to take a screenshot is you're going to press and hold the on off button at the same time you press the volume up button. It's about usually around right here. So it just depends on the type of model you're working on. So let me resize my screen a little bit so we can, we can see a little bit better. All right, so uh, I'm going to tap on my Safari. And let's just, I just want to show you rather than take a picture of my home screen, which is really boring, let's take a screenshot of this. So I opened up an app. This was my Safari um, browser and I found this article and now let's take a screenshot. So again, for me, I have a home button so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press my home button at the same time. This is where my on off button is. So we can practice this together if you want. I'm going to click both at the same time. And when I do that, I want you to pay attention. You're going to see this little mini picture show up in the lower left corner of my screen. So let me show you what happens. I'm going to click both at the same time. Do you see how we have this little mini picture show up here? If I tap on that little, it's called a thumbnail, it brings it up in an editor. So I wanna do this one more time. I'm going to click my home button to close this. And then let's just wait for this to, to disappear. Um, what you can do, is again, let's try this. Let's click on the home button and the uh, on off button one more time. At least for me, that's what I'm doing. I'm clicking it at the same time. It takes a little practice. You'll see your screen kind of flashes a little bit. We have something called a thumbnail. It stays up there for a few seconds and then it disappears. So don't panic. If you're not fast enough, you're like, oh, I, I couldn't tap that little thumbnail in the lower left corner. What happened to my screenshot? So I'm going to show you, I'm going to click on my home button to close my Safari browser app. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where are your screenshots saved? They're always saved to your photos app. So I happen to have both photos and Google photos, but let me just show you if I tap on my photos app, here are, I actually did my, the same screenshot twice. Your screenshots are always saved right there. So I'm just going to tap on one. So whenever you take a screenshot on your iPad, it's always saved to your photos app. And so this is, I have two of them that I was showing you. Here is one, and let me see if it, and here's the second one. So the video was rolling twice. Each time I took a screenshot, it was a, another pup that showed up in that little video. And so this is where you can access, open up your, you know, just select the photo, select the image, the screenshot, excuse me. And then one of the things that you unfortunately can't see on when I have my photos open, there is a menu that displays here. Now, um, and again, it's because I, I'm the way that I'm sharing my iPad, you won't be able to see this, but I'm going to... Um, bring up uh, a photo in an editor and I want to show you what you can do with it. So when you have, when you bring up a screenshot that's been saved in photos, where I'm circling in the upper right-hand corner, 
you're going to see a menu. My apologies, but you'll be able to, uh, there'll be a, an icon for you to share this with. There'll be another icon for you to delete it. Uh, there'll be an icon that says edit. And when you tap on edit, it will bring you into this um, editing mode. Uh, so just know that this is where I've circled. This is where you'll have access to uh, the different icons. So I'm going to, let me just close this for a moment. Come on, close, thank you. And let's do this one more time because I wanna show you how you can use the editor. So I'm just going to take a screenshot of my home screen. Just easy. Let's do that. Take a screenshot, click both at the same time. I'm going to tap on my little thumbnail. That's the correct word. When I do that, when you tap on that little thumbnail, all it lets you do is bring your screenshot into this editor. So I showed you two different editors. This editor, you gain access to by tapping on the lower left corner on that thumbnail, the little mini picture that shows up. The other editor you can gain access to when you go into your photos app, tap on a the screenshot and then tap on the edit uh, link in the upper right hand corner, which you didn't see on my screen. It's just the way photos works when I'm sharing my screen with you this way. But let me just show you a few things that you can do when you're in this editor. So you've taken a screenshot. One of the things that you can do is, and you'll see the share button when you open up the photo, the screenshot from your photos app as well. If you tap on the share icon, what it allows you to do is then share this with different people. You can send it as a text message. You can send this screenshot as an email. If you have any uh, social media apps, you can share it there. Um, there's lots that you can do here. So I just wanted to, I'm gonna tap off of the screen right here. That's what the share icon will let you do. It lets you, Send it to others. You can print it if you have that set up. Um, if you don't like this, you can just tap on trash and it will delete your screenshot. Here's a fun one. I'm going to tap on this little pencil icon. And when I do that, it brings up this little tool palette at the bottom. This just enables you to mark up your screenshot. So if I were to, I don't know, I'm going to select the the green, maybe I'll put, I don't know, uh, let's do blue. I'm going to blue color. Um, it will just allow me to mark up my, uh, my screenshot. And then if you click or tap on, excuse me, the pencil icon again, it just collapses that. Lastly, you'll notice that on the edges of your screenshot, there are these little corners. If you take your finger and if you drag one of the corners, you can resize this, you can crop it. And so what I've done is I've cropped my little screenshot. So just some fun things you can do if you bring it up in the editor, I'll let you play around with, with all of this. And once you've, you know, cropped it or just left it as is, you can send it, you can, you know, send it, you know, do whatever you need to. And then when you're done playing, you can just tap on done. And you have an option. Do you want to save this back to your photos or do you want to save it to an app called files? And if we, I don't know if we're going to get to files today, but I'm just going to tap save to photos. And again, what we've just done is we've taken a screenshot. I've tapped on that little thumbnail that only stays for a few seconds. It brings me to an editor. I can play around. I can resize, crop, write, whatever I need to do. And then I have the option to save it. 
So if I go back to my photos, let's just cancel over here, go back here. There it is. There's my, my screenshot. And this is the one that I cropped and you can tell I've like written all over it. So I'm just going to click on my close button to close this. And so I just wanted to show you how you can take a screenshot. And then once you take the screenshot, where do you access the screenshot? What can you do with it? So I get this question a lot. People are like, well, I just, I'm opening this and how do I take a screenshot? It depends on your model. You'll either click on the home button and the on off button at the same time, or you may be clicking on the volume up button and your on off button. So kind of fun stuff. Let's take a look in Safari. So again, I included this because I get lots of questions for folks who, you know, have been using Safari, have, you know, are just starting out. They never quite know. It's like, well, how do I, how do I bookmark things? So again, Safari is the, uh, the browser that comes with your iPad. And if I tap on Safari, and uh, let's go ahead and I'm, you know, you can tap in the search, uh, the search field and you can search on anything, but we're here right now. I'm just going to leave it on my, the 30 cutest dog breeds. There you go. Um, how do you bookmark something in Safari? So first off, I've circled the share icon. So whenever you are in, you found a website on your Safari browser and you wanna bookmark it so that you can quickly access it again, you're going to tap on that share button. And I've circled it right here. I hope you can see it right there. I'm going to tap on share. And then you'll see down over here in my menu that drops down, I have the option to add a bookmark. If I tap on add bookmark, it's going to bring up a few options. So let me just, I'm going to keep it as puppies. I'm just going to tap on my keyboard key, I just want to close this down because by default, you'll see there's this location area. When you tap on that share icon and you select bookmark, add bookmark, by default, it's going to put it on the bookmarks section. If you wish to add another area, because you can customize this, if I tap on bookmarks, it brings up some other options. And so again, I simply tapped on bookmarks. I could put this in my favorites, simply tapping on favorites. I'm now going to add this to my favorites area of my bookmarks. If I tap on favorites, it always, whatever is selected, it always brings up this menu. You can add your own folder. So we'll do that in a moment. I just wanted to keep it simple. So let's let's go ahead and just, I want to add this. Let's go back and add it to bookmarks. I'm going to tap on bookmarks. I want to show you where this is going to be saved. On the upper left corner of my browser window, I have this look like a, a pane, a panel. If I tap on that icon in the upper left corner, it brings up this sidebar. And so tapping on it once brings up the sidebar. Tapping on this symbol a second time closes it. So if we tap on this symbol, this is where we find our bookmarks. Um, if I created any other uh, folders that would show up here. So if I tap on bookmarks, this is where 
my cutest dogs show up. So whatever you've bookmarked recently, it looks like it tends to add it to the bottom of your list here. And again, I bookmark a couple of things in my the bookmarks area. And as I continue to bookmark things, they're going to show up here. You'll also notice there's something called favorites if I tap on favorites. So favorites is kind of nested within bookmarks. So let's take a look at this. I'm just going to tap on the back button. I'll tap on Safari one more time. And that always brings us back to this main sidebar. So let's do this a, a second time. I'm going to save this this web page. I'm going to tap on add bookmarks. Let me just close my keyboard. I'm going to tap on bookmarks. And instead of doing it in that first bookmarks section, let's tap on favorites because I want to show you. Um, and when you do this, by the way, you want to tap on save. Does everybody see the save over here? We'll tap on save. And then let's go back. I already have my, my Safari open here, my, um, excuse me, my side panel. I'm tapping on bookmarks. Let's tap on favorites. And this is where my, my most recent bookmark is. So if you're going to save your bookmarks under favorites, what you'll need to do is when you first get to this sidebar over here, you'll navigate to bookmarks by tapping on it. And then you'll navigate to favorites by tapping on that. So one is kind of nested under the other. And then again, Whenever you see this little symbol that I've circled, if you tap on that, it always closes the sidebar and then it just brings you back to your website. Does anybody have any questions about that? Not because I get a lot of questions like, how do you do this? And again, it's just starting by tapping on the share button and then deciding if you'd like to bookmark this. All righty, so that's a quick and easy on how do you bookmark things? I think we have time for maybe one more. Ah, the search menu. All right, this is fun. I'm going to close my Safari browser to get back to my my main iPad screen. And I wanna show you how you can bring up something called the search menu. You may or may not know about this. So I'm starting, oops, let me put my draw tool back on. I'm gonna start somewhere in the middle of my iPad screen. And I'm just going to, with my finger, I'm just gonna swipe down. So starting in the middle of my iPad screen, and just swiping down. When I do that, it brings up this search menu. So for those of you who, and I think, and this is you, who don't have the library app available to them on their dock, this is yet another way to find the app. So you can either, you know, Click and press, you know, on your home button, say open the name of the dock. Or when I swipe down from sort of dead center on my screen there, it brings up this search menu and I can search for apps that are on my iPad. I can search, can do a web search. I can search for anything that is on my iPad, uh, something in settings. I can search emails, I can search on contacts, notes, you know, documents, you name it, it will search on anything 
on your iPad as well as the web. So for example, I'm in this search menu and maybe I wanted to, um, if let's see, I think I have a calculator. There it is, there's my calculator. I just started typing out C-A-L-C. -C, and if I had a calculator app and I wanted to find it quickly, pull down the search menu, just start to type the app that you're looking for and then it will find it for you. And you just simply tap on the app to open it. And now to clear what I've searched on, I'm just going to tap on that little X that I've circled. And by the way, you always have the option to tap on your mic over here and you can speak uh, what you wanna search on. If I'm searching on, um, oh, let's just do, I don't know, search on the Olympics. <laughs> Olympics 2022. If I do this, it will actually open up my web browser from the search menu and go ahead and search through. I can do a, a web search. So I'm just going to close on this. Again, to get to that search menu, you're going to start somewhere in the middle of your screen. Just give it a swipe down. I'm just going to tap on my X button to clear the search. And uh, I'm going to type out my sister, one of my sister's names. And just to show you, it finds her contact information. So I could tap on her name and it's going to. Uh, bring up her contact information. And so that's the search menu. And I, you know, old habits die hard, right? I use this sometimes instead of pressing my home button and saying, open calculator. I just, I sometimes I'm even too lazy to do that. I just swipe down and I'll start typing out the name of the app that I'm looking for. Boom, it's right there. So again, this is really useful. It will search on anything on your iPad. So sometimes it's fun. Just start searching on different things. See what you can find. Even emails. It will search in your emails as well. So I'm just going to click on my home button to finish up. Uh, let me see. We have a couple of minutes left. Let's see what I can squeeze in here. Hang on. Uh, we do have the files app. Is there something else? Control center. All right. Um, one thing that I wanted to quickly show you, and I go into more details when I do my iPad advance, but since we have three minutes, the files app. So you'll notice on my iPad, whoops, let's go back to my drawing tools. I have something called the Files app. And if you don't have it on your, uh, already loaded on your iPad, you can always go to the App Store and just search Files, and then you can download the Files app. So if you're working on a PC, maybe you've worked with Explorer, File Explorer, or if you're on a Mac, maybe you're working with, you know, your Finder. So on your iPad, also on your smartphones too, and if you're working on an iPhone, you have an app called Files. It's similar to your File Explorer or your Finder on your PC, your Mac. It allows you to gain access to files that you, things that you've downloaded to, directly to your iPad. So I'm going to tap on files and I'm just going to quickly explain to you um, where you see locations. Uh, these provide you access to any cloud storage apps that you might be running. I use um, iCloud, Google Drive, Dropbox. I got them all because I teach these classes. But there's also an option that says on my iPad. So you can have access to files, images, videos that you've downloaded directly to your iPad, or if you're using any of the cloud storage apps, you have access to those as well. So if I select on my iPad, 
what you're seeing here on the right hand side, these are folders that are physically sitting on my iPad. Uh, and I have some items in a downloads folder. If I tap on that, I've downloaded some videos, I've downloaded some documents, and they're sitting in my iPad, physically sitting on the iPad. I can tap on any of these and it will open it up. This happens to be a video. Uh, this will probably bring this. And if it's, for example, if I created something in Google Docs, it will open it up in the Google Docs app. And so again, I just wanted to introduce you. No, our time is up. I'm sorry. But I just wanted to show you the Files app allows you to gain access to anything you've downloaded physically directly on your iPad, or if you're using any of the cloud storage apps, you can have access to your documents from there as well. They'll just open those uh, files up uh, in the cloud. And so this is your files, a quick intro to that Files app. And I go into more detail here when I'm doing my iPad advanced class. So I'm just going to click on my home button to close. And let me stop my share. Again, we ran over today. My bad. I apologize. There's always so much I want to show people. Um, I'm hoping that you picked up a few new things. For those of you who've been using your iPad for a while, uh, there's so, so much to go over. Um, I've chosen these topics because I get lots of questions um, about them. So for people who have been using their iPad for a little bit or are fairly new. So anyway, I wanted to thank everyone for joining me today. It's great